In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a micro front end architecture from scratch using React, Webpack, and Module Federation. By the end of this video, you'll have a working example with a host application and multiple independent micro apps communicating together. Let's get started. Before we dive in, if you're interested in advanced micro front end patterns, including a BFF layer, microservices with Nest.js, and production deployment strategies, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and watch until the end. Based on the engagement, I'm planning an advanced course that covers all of these topics. Now let's begin. Imagine you're working on a large web application. Your project has a shopping cart, a product catalog, a user profile section, and a payment system. Everything is in one massive code base. Here's what happens. First, when you need to deploy a tiny change in the shopping cart, you have to rebuild and redeploy the entire application. This means waiting for builds to complete, testing everything again, and hoping you didn't break something else. Second, your team is split into different squads, one working on the catalog, another on payments, another on the profile, but everyone's touching the same code base. You get merge conflicts, bottlenecks, and coordination headaches. Third, if you want to try a new framework for just one feature, maybe you want to use Vue instead of React for the profile section. You can't. You're locked into whatever stack your entire app uses. This is exactly where micro frontends come in. Micro frontends are exactly what they sound like. They're taking the microservices architecture pattern that revolutionized backend development and applying it to the front end. Instead of one giant monolith, you break your application into smaller, independent pieces. Each piece is a separate application that handles its own concerns. We call these micro apps or sub apps. Think of it like this. Instead of one massive kitchen, you have specialized kitchens. The pizza place is responsible for pizzas. The sushi place is responsible for sushi. And a host brings it all together. They don't interfere with each other. They just do their job and the host coordinates everything. With micro front ends, you get independent development. Each team can work on their own micro app without stepping on anyone's toes. They make their own architectural decisions. Independent deployment. You can push updates to just the shopping cart without redeploying the entire application. Technology flexibility. One team can use React, another can use Vue, and another can use Angular, all in the same application. As long as they communicate properly, it doesn't matter. Scalability. As your application grows, you can scale each micro app independently based on its needs. Spotify uses a micro front end architecture. Their main shell loads different micro apps, the playlist editor, the search interface, the recommendation system. Teams can update their sections independently. Stripe does this too. They have separate micro apps for different products and features. The payment form is one micro app, the dashboard is another. Netflix manages massive complexity with micro front ends. Different features, different teams, all coordinated through a shell application. And you know what? You can build this too, even if you're just starting out. Here's how module federation works under the hood. At build time, each application is bundled separately using Webpack. But instead of bundling everything as usual, we configure certain things to be exposed to other applications. This is called sharing or exposing modules. This is powerful because it's happening at runtime, not build time. You don't need a monolithic build process. Each app builds independently, and at runtime, they discover what they can share. For example, your host app might say, I'm exposing my router component and my UI library. Anyone can use these. And a remote app might say, I'm exposing my dashboard widget and my payment form. You can use these too. At runtime, when your host application loads, it connects to these remote applications. It says, hey, what modules do you have? What dependencies do you need? Let's figure out what we can share and what we each need to load separately. So let's move on to practice. Now we'll look at real examples of how micro front ends work in practice. Here we have three React applications, a host application and two micro front ends. MFE1 and MFE2. The app.tsx file, it's a standard React component, nothing fancy, webpack configuration, which is pretty straightforward as well. And the TypeScript configuration, all standard settings. These are the building blocks we'll use to connect everything together. Now let's dive deeper into the module federation configuration for MFE1. 
we're creating a new container with Module Federation plugin, which is the core of Micro Frontend's architecture. First, we give it a name, MFE1. This is a unique identifier for this Micro Frontend. Next, we specify the remote entry file as remote entry, JS. This file is crucial. It's basically the manifest that tells other applications what modules this micro frontend exposes and how to load them. In the expose section, we're making the app component publicly available to other applications. We're exposing dot slash app, which maps to dot slash src slash app dot tsx. Think of this like creating a public API for your micro frontend. Any other application that knows about MFE1 can now import and use this app component. The remote section is empty for now because MFE1 doesn't depend on any other micro front ends. It's self-contained. If MFE1 needed to use components from MFE2, we would configure it here. Now let's talk about the shared section, which is really important. We're configuring shared dependencies, React and React Dumb. These are libraries that we want to share across all our applications. We set them as eager, true, which means the host application will load these libraries first, and then all micro front ends will use the same instances. We also set singleton, true, ensuring that only one instance of React and Reactum exists in memory across all applications. This prevents version conflicts and memory bloat. We disable required version and strict version checking. This is important because it gives us flexibility. If the host has React 19 and MFE1 also needs React 18, they'll share it without throwing version mismatch errors. This makes the whole system more resilient and easier to maintain. Now we're moving to the host application's Webpack configuration. We're going to copy the module federation plugin setup from MFE1 and paste it here, but with some important modifications. The host application plays a different role in the micro front end's architecture. It acts as the orchestrator, the main entry point that loads and manages all the micro front ends. So while we still use module federation plugin, the configuration will be different. For the host, we won't expose any components like we did in MFE1. Instead, we'll use the remote section to specify where to find and load MFE1 and MFE2. We'll still configure the shared dependencies React and Reactum to ensure all micro front ends use the same instances and maintain consistency across the application. The host webpack configuration essentially becomes the central hub that knows about all micro front ends, loads them dynamically, and manages their lifecycle. This is what makes the whole micro front ends architecture work seamlessly. Now we're adding an import to load the MFE1 app component. But as soon as we do this, TypeScript throws an error at us. This is a common problem when working with module federation. TypeScript doesn't know about these remote modules. They don't exist as actual files in our project, so TypeScript's type checker can't find them. It has no idea what MFE1 slash app is or what types it exports. This is because module federation is a runtime feature, but TypeScript operates at compile time. To fix this TypeScript error, we create a types folder in our project and add an index.dts file. This is a TypeScript declaration file that tells TypeScript about external modules that it wouldn't normally know about. Here we're declaring a module called MFE1 slash app. We're telling TypeScript, hey, this module exists and it exports a default export called app, which is a functional component from React. It's of type FC, which stands for functional component. This declaration file acts as a bridge between TypeScript and module federation. It provides type information for remote modules that TypeScript can't see at compile time. Now TypeScript knows what to expect when we import from MFE1 slash app, and it can provide proper type checking and autocomplete in our IDE. We follow the same pattern as a regular React component. It imports FC from React and exports a default component. This is a simple but effective way to make TypeScript happy while keeping our code clean and type safe. If we had other exports from MFE1, we could declare them here as well. This way, we get the best of both worlds. The flexibility of runtime module loading from module federation. I forgot something important in the Webpack configuration. We need to add the new keyword before container.module federation plugin. This is a small but critical detail. Module federation plugin is a class, and we need to instantiate it with the new keyword to create an instance of it. 
without new, Webpack won't recognize it as a valid plugin, and the configuration won't work. We started the project, but it's not working. The application is failing to load. This is actually a common issue when working with Module Federation for the first time. The problem is that we're trying to import remote modules synchronously at the top level of our application. But these remote modules need to be loaded at runtime, after the host application has bootstrapped and Module Federation has initialized. To fix this, we need to use lazy imports. We'll use React's lazy function combined with Suspense to dynamically load these remote modules. This way, the host application will load first, Module Federation will be ready, and then we can safely load the micro frontends. Lazy loading gives Module Federation time to do its work behind the scenes, fetching the remote entry JS files, discovering the exposed modules, and preparing them for use. Great, now everything is working. We can see the host application is running successfully and displaying the app component from MFE1. The micro frontend is being loaded dynamically and rendering perfectly. One of the really cool aspects of Micro Frontend's architecture is that each application is completely independent. Look at this. MFE1 is actually running on its own port, port 3001. You can open it in a separate browser tab and see it working standalone, completely isolated from the host application. Now we're gonna do the same thing for MFE2. We'll set up the module federation configuration, expose the app component, configure shared dependencies, and make sure everything is properly integrated with the host. This process is identical to what we did with MFE1. We'll configure module federation plugin with the name MFE2, expose the app component, and set up the shared React and Reactem dependencies with the same settings. Eager loading, singleton mode, and flexible versioning. Then we'll add MFE2 to the host's remote section so the host knows where to find and load it. We'll create the type declarations for MFE2 slash app so TypeScript is happy and use lazy imports to load the component at runtime. The beauty of this architecture is that once you've done it once, the pattern is straightforward to repeat. Each micro front end follows the same setup, and they all work together seamlessly through the host application. Now we need to update the app component in the host to import MFE2. We'll add the lazy import for MFE2 slash app, just like we did for MFE1. Next, we need to add MFE2 to the Remotes section in the host's Webpack configuration. If you want to see how to create shared Webpack and TypeScript configurations, how to set up common settings across all applications, and how to manage shared packages that are available to all micro frontends, all of this will be in my free course. In that course, we'll build a large-scale application using micro frontends architecture together with a BFF layer and microservices built with Nest.js. It's gonna be comprehensive and production ready. But here's the thing. The release of this course depends on you. Your activity matters. Watch the videos all the way through, engage with the content, and support the channel. When I see that you're interested and actively following along, that's when the first series of the new course will be released. So if you wanna see advanced micro frontends architecture in action, Make sure you stick around, watch completely, and let me know you're interested. The next course is coming, but it starts with you.